Hi everyone, uh, I'm actually here at Promega and I'm with uh, Nidhi Nath, who's a uh, group leader at the uh, R&D department here. We've been discussing immunocapture and, and high capacity beads. So, you know, Nidhi, maybe you can kind of explain what these high capacity beads are, protein A, protein G. Oh, that's, that's a great question. It's my pleasure. Uh, you know, I'll be happy to explain to you. Hey, uh, I have a... Uh, a drawing board here, so why don't I draw it? Excellent. Okay, so so that we, we bring in two different innovation to these beads. So one is these beads are magnetic beads and they are very porous, so they have small pores in there, which gives them a very high surface area. And we attach a protein A or protein G in an orientation that puts them in a the right phase to capture the antibodies. Okay. okay, and so the combination of these two things give them extremely high capacity for these two magnetic beads that are available in the market right now. Okay, so when you say high capacity, what do you mean? Like relative to what? How much more? You know, well, most of the, you know, the, the capacity for magnetic beads so far in the commercial area has been extremely low, so which makes it unfeasible for commercial uh, purification. Okay. But these uh, have a capacity of as high as 30 milligrams of human IgG okay. using a 1 ml of the beads. Okay. Can you tell me the difference, you know, for the newbies out there, maybe more small molecule folks transitioning to large molecule analysis, the difference between maybe protein A versus protein G? Another great question. So what happens is that this is an antibody structure. You can think about it. Mm -hmm. Protein A and protein G both binds at this FC part of the antibody. Okay. okay. The difference is that protein G can bind a lot of different antibodies from different species. Whereas protein A does not bind very well to mouse, some isotypes. Okay. So the protein G has a wider specificity compared to the protein A. Oh, excellent. Okay, so one, one more question I have. So how in, say, the, the pharmaceutical industry would there be an advantage to these, you know, um, high capacity protein A, protein G beads? Great. So let's say, like, you know, pharma companies want to do something called PKP day, uh, studies, where they want to see that if they inject an antibody drug, how long, uh, how long does it last in the blood uh, samples, right? Okay. So a typical workflow is you will take a blood serum, uh, you will add it to the tube, and then you want to capture all the antibodies that are present in there, okay? okay? So they can add some of these magnetic beads, capture all the antibodies, mm -hmm. take them off, and then put them in a mass spec that you guys make. Right. And so that allows them to do uh, these kind of PKPD studies on number of samples. You can automate these beads and will help the customers a lot. Excellent. Thanks for the, the beautiful introduction. Thank you very much. Continuing my tour here at uh, Promega, I've run into Mike Rosenblatt. He's the uh, group leader of uh, LCMS and, and reagents here at Promega. Mike, we were chatting about a couple of things, and you know we're doing a lot more large molecule bioanalysis in pharma these days, specifically, you know, regulated bioanalysis. And one of the things in that environment is you know system suitability tests, especially when you think about the small molecule perspective. And now moving to large molecules, that's a pretty key thing as well, you know, to make sure the mass spec is working right before you run a ton of samples. So I know you've been working on something and have some great products. Maybe you can describe that a little bit. Yeah, we just launched what we call the Promega 6x5 LCMS MS peptide reference mixture. And this is a tool, essentially a universal system suitability test designed to give end users a chance to landmark things like retention time, sensitivity peak height, peak width, um, dynamic range, and also mass accuracy. Um, it's mostly suited for high-res instruments, but certainly could be uh, used with lower resolution instruments like triple stage quadrupole instruments. Um, and then to make life even more exciting and to make your life easier, we've developed a software tool which will allow you to, in really a matter of minutes, calculate key parameters like retention time, um, sensitivity and things like that. And then if you want to track the performance of your instrument over the course of weeks or months, the software will do that. So you can look at trends. Is your retention time shifting? Do you have to change the column or clean the column? That's important. <laughs> do you have to clean your optics when your sensitivity takes a hit? When do you have to recalibrate? So you can start to get metrics and, and get an idea to really understand uh, your instrument and the type of maintenance and performance that needs to be done. Um, We've also set up the software so that it's suitable for um, analysis in complex samples, so you can actually spike this mixture into every single sample, okay. and the software will still uh, record those parameters for you, so you can track 
the every, you know the instrument over the course of every injection if you want to. Oh, the excellent. software will do all of that. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Sure.